Good morning, Westmont community, and welcome to uh, this morning's version of our Diaspora Instagram Peace Together Chapel services. Uh, we're putting these together and offering these to the Westmont community, the whole community, those that are going to be coming, those who are already in the Westmont community, and uh, alumni as well. And we gather in the name of Jesus Christ to remember that we worship a God who is not caught by surprise by our current global circumstances, a God who is very much on the throne and who is with us. We worship a God who is actively involved in world history and always has been. So be encouraged this morning as we worship together, as we uh, pray together, and as we hear a, an encouraging word from our very own Irie Jarrett, uh, one of our women's basketball phenoms. So welcome this morning and uh, bless you. Hey Westmont, happy Wednesday. Uh, good to be with you remotely. I am in my bedroom with my keyboard. Um, so uh, my encouragement to us today is to remember that we aren't the first Christians who have lived through a time of plague, of um, disease that was spread widely and that was dangerous. Um, so I thought it might be helpful if we learn a song that was written during a time of plague. Um, and so let me tell you about it. Martin Rickart was a pastor in Germany during the 1600s, during the Thirty Years War, which was just a terrible, violent, crazy time. And he was walled up in a village where a lot of people were kind of refugees and stuff at the time. And a plague was going around. So imagine being like in this walled village and a plague going around. And it was just really awful. And he was the pastor in the town. He was burying, you know, 50 people a day or something like that, and including his wife at one point. Um, <clears throat> but he wrote this hymn um, of thankfulness to God. And it just seems kind of counterintuitive at first that um, one of the great hymns of gratitude would have been written in that time and in that place uh, by that person, uh, but I think it stands as a testament in the church's collective memory that God is worthy of our gratitude of giving thanks to, um, even in hard times. And um, God's bounteous grace, his abundant goodness um, hasn't changed during this time. So I'm going to teach you this hymn. We've sung it before at Westmont around Thanksgiving, but um, it's called Now Thank We All Our God. I'll play through it once and then we'll sing it.
So I want to read this prayer. Uh, a friend of mine, Jim, gave me this book uh, years ago, The Valley of Vision, and it's a bunch of uh, Puritan prayers from quite a while ago. This one is called Refuge, and I thought it was uh, appropriate for our current circumstances. O oh Lord, whose power is infinite and wisdom infallible, order things that they may neither hinder nor discourage me nor prove obstacles to the progress of thy cause. Stand between me and all strife, that no evil befall, no sin corrupt my gifts, zeal, and attainments. May I follow duty and not any foolish device of my own. Permit me not to labor at work which thou wilt not bless, that I may serve thee without disgrace or debt. Let me dwell in thy most secret place under thy shadow, where is safe, impenetrable protection from the arrow that flieth by day, the pestilence that walketh in darkness, the strife of tongues, the malice of ill will, the hurt of unkind talk, the snares of company, the perils of youth, the temptations of middle life, the mournings of old age, the fear of death. I am entirely dependent upon thee for support, counsel, and consolation. Uphold me by thy free spirit, and may I not think it enough to be preserved from falling, but may I always go forward, always abounding in the work thou givest me to do. Strengthen me by thy spirit in my inner self for every purpose of my Christian life. All my jewels I give to the shadow of the safety that is in thee my name anew in Christ, my body, soul, talents, character, success, spouse, children, friends, work, my present, my future, my end. Take them, they are thine, and I am thine now and forever. Amen. Checking connection. Now I'm now live. Here we go. Well, in the nick of time, we almost had some Instagram failure. Uh, welcome everybody to our next Instagram live mini chapel, and uh, where we're welcoming on uh, the Westmont community, um, students, faculty, staff, alumni, etc. Okay, Irie, I see you're there, and so I'm gonna. Welcome you in. Go live with Irie. I'm so excited about this morning. Should take you just a second to come on. There she is. Irie, how are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. It's so good to see you this morning. Jamie's right here next to me. She's filming, but there Hi. she is. <laughs> Uh, we're so glad to see you. Irie Jarrett is our star basketball player on our women's team that was ranked number one in the nation going into the national NAIA tournament. She's also been in Jamie and I's um, Kapak Day Bible study, and she's in our ministry leadership class, and we just know her to be such a delightful young woman of God. And so, uh, Irie, I was just thinking about uh, what to do with some of these chapels. And I thought I really would love to hear from you um, because I just admire your faith so much, but also you've, you are walking through, as we all are, real tragedy and loss. And, but you've also, as a, you've walked through that as an athlete and with a wonderful team navigating this on top of everything else. And so I just thought we could hear from you today and, and hear what the Lord's been up to and you don't have to tie it up for the pretty bow, but I'd love to hear your your take on what, what you have for us today. All right. Okay. Um, can I start out by praying? Oh, that'd be fantastic. <laughs> awesome. Dear God, I just uh, I just thank you so much for this Westmont community um, and mm. the ability that we have to just come on here, even if it's Instagram Live, and just gather for chapel. Um, I just thank you for. Uh, my faculty, staff, students, I pray that you just keep them safe wherever they are. I pray that um, right now you just speak through me, Lord, and that um, it would be your words and not mine. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Yeah. 
Um, thank you so much for inviting me to come speak. I, I know I have about like five minutes or so, so I'm just going to jump right into it. Preach it. Revival's going to break out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I know you asked if I could share a little bit about our team and just how our team navigated hardship and how we stayed faithful throughout that. Um, and we did have a lot of hardship. So we had some pretty big injuries. We had teammates with family and friends that were sick. Um, and even teammates that had experienced death around them. Mm. And um, so that was really hard. And before the season, Coach Moore, she was praying about the theme, and she decided that it would be grit and gratitude. Mm. And that's really just what embodied this season. Um, and so I was thinking, you know, I was praying, God, like, where, where in the Bible um, should I, like, speak from? And I was brought to Philippians, which is one of my favorite books mm. ever. Um, and this really is a book of grit and gratitude. And so, um, like, before we even go through any of it, I think it's super important to note that Paul is, like, in prison. And he is, um, like, right in the middle of, like, some pretty big hardship. And he's not a stranger to hardship, but he's, like, right in some prison. And yet this book is full of, like, in- an insane amount of joy. Um, and so I was reading through it, and... I noted three things that he did that I would encourage the Westmore community to embody and three things that I feel like um, our team this year really did embody. So um, the first thing is that he began with gratitude. Mm. And so he begins his letter with, I thank my God every time I remember you and all my prayers for you. Um, I always pray with joy because of your partnership in the gospel. Mm. And um, and then later on, you write, do everything without grumbling or arguing so that you may become blameless and pure children of God without a fault in a warped and crooked generation. So I think this ability to put a grateful heart over a grumbling heart mm. is really important for our team. We would start with like a gratitude minute. We would start like either uh, in the beginning of our practice or ending them sometimes, just yelling out things we were grateful for. We would do gratitude journaling. Um, and just making sure that gratitude was always in the forefront of our mind. It's so easy to caught up to get caught up in like complaining because there's so much wrong in this broken world. Yeah. Um, but just remembering that, that God is good and we have so much to be grateful for. Mm. Um, and so that's my first encouragement for the lesson of community. Um, the second one is to choose joy. Mm. And Paul writes the word rejoice like seven times or something I counted. Right. But um, in chapter four, verse four, he writes, rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. Um, and I circled always because it's so easy to only rejoice in the Lord when things are going well. Right. Um, rejoice in the Lord, you know, only in the good and not in the bad. But Paul right here is communicating to never let your praise be contingent on the circumstances, mm. on the trials, on the things going on around us. Um, so I know this is such a crazy time. Um, there's so much going on and so much uncertainty and, um, my encouragement is just for us to rejoice, even mm-hmm. in the hardship. Um, and th- the last thing that I noted was to pray for peace. Mm-hmm. Um, and I truly believe that this is why Paul was able to be locked up in prison in chains and say, I'm in chains for Christ, like I'm here um, because of Christ, and able to not be anxious at all. Um, because this peace talked about in this verse that transcends all understanding is so real. Um, and so... Chapter 4, verse 6, he says, Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God, and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. And so we were so blessed as um, as our basketball team to have this amazing community who, who prayed for us. I could just name, like, hundreds of names, but just, like, this entire community that, that said, you know, these, this entire team is really going through, like, something huge and just took it upon themselves to pray for us continually, like, every day. Um, and so this is my prayer for the Westmont community, just that we would um, ask for hearts of gratitude, that we'd be able to begin with gratitude um, our days, mm. and that we would choose joy, even when it's really hard to choose joy, and that we would rejoice. Um, even when things aren't going the way that we planned. Mm. Um, and lastly, that we would pray for peace. Um, yeah. You know, I was thinking a lot, uh, two days ago would have been when we were playing in our national tournament game mm. and how that all got canceled. And I was thinking about all the athletes who um, don't get to play their senior season and 
Mm-hmm. Um, and then, you know, all the stuff going on with graduation, just these seniors, I was, it was very heavy on my heart. And it was this verse, um, this prayer, just to not be anxious about anything. Mm-hmm. Um, and just this promise that God will give us a peace that transcends all understanding. And even when we don't know the next steps or what's going to happen, um, we can still like rejoice and choose joy knowing that God is faithful. Yeah. So. Oh, that's such a good word. Such a good word from from an athlete, because I think one of the things that's um, so great about athletics is it teaches us that our will, I think Dallas Willard says, our will is the one thing that the Lord doesn't own. Like we have a choice in what we do. And you're highlighting that so beautifully out of that passage that we have a a, jo- a, a response and a willful decision to make in how we uh, encounter these things. And you certainly embody that in so many ways. So thanks so much for sharing that with us, Irene. Uh, if you'll if you'll stay on uh, for prayer, I, I love that. And Jamie's going to take over, so we're going to do a swap. I'm going to film for Brad now and watch her. She here she comes. Boom! Seamless. Hey. Seamless. Hi. Hi, Irene. <laughs> I just love that so much. Thank you so much for sharing your heart and for a lot of you who have kind of joined in as Irene was sharing. Uh, she's a student at Westmont and uh, is on the basketball team and went through uh, big changes in the seasons from highs to then kind of letting go of the opportunity of playing as a team in the national tournament. But I just wanted to say that the times I've met with you, Irie, uh, over lunches or, or over the last couple of years, that you are uh, so consistently um, true to the word that you just spoke. And you really have a, a beautiful heart and it's infectious and so what she's encouraged us in is this, uh, the team motto of grit and gratitude. And what a word for all of us, you know, not all of us didn't get to play in the national championships through this thing. Maybe we're hunkered down in a house or something like that. Uh, maybe we had to let go of plans that we had. We heard recently, Scott and I were talking about, um, we're, our, our plans are not us. We're, we're more than our plans. And, and you're speaking to so many things that happen. So we just want to pray together as a community before we finish chapel today and pray over those words of your exhortation to the Westmont community to, to have grit, to have gratitude, to have joy. Um, so let's pray together. Let's, let's lift up uh, and I'll just start praying. And any of you who want to, uh, chime in with words like you're doing now so many encouragements for Irie right now and just in her words in her heart but lord we lift up uh our community at large our world lord first we lift up to you what's going on in the world and um this virus and all the caregivers and decisions of leadership going on lord we pray for um wisdom for leaders we pray for our world who needs you desperately lord And we come together as a community and we're united in that, Lord, that we need you and we come to you and seek you. Lord, we uh, lift up the Westmont community, all the students, faculty, staff, alumni, all of us coming around this this call right now that are that are unified in you. And and we pray for that gratitude, that joyful heart, that prayer for peace. All that that you inspire, Holy Spirit, we welcome that right now. And we, we pray that over our community. We pray that especially over our students who are switching such gears. But that there would be a spirit of gratitude that your Holy Spirit would guide and offer. Yes, I see for patients. I see, I see for the workers on campus. Um, yeah, I see a lot of prayers going up right now. And we come to you through technology. Your living spirit is with us right now, God. We humble ourselves and we need you. And uh, we ask for everything that you'd have for our community right now, that you would unify us for students who are lonely. Yes, Lord, for those that are struggling with anxiety or isolation or disconnection, we pray that you would supernaturally by your spirit connect us together. Lord, you can do that. And you can draw in purpose and meaning where we've lost that or lost our way. Um. Lord, we call upon your name together. Yes, for strength and weakness. Lord, a lot of us do feel weak. We feel stripped away of the things that we were feeling really comfortable and confident in. But Lord, um, there's strength in this place with you now. That you have more to offer us than we could have on ourselves. That we could muster ourselves, Lord. Thank you. We pray for your will be done, Lord, in our lives. 
Irie, would you close us in prayer for this time just over the Westmont community? Yeah, of course. God, I thank you so much um, just for your love for us. I thank you that you continue to watch over us. Um, and I thank you for your faithfulness in times like these when there's so much uncertainty. Um, I pray that if there's any fear or anxiety or worry in anyone's heart, that um, you would just give them a peace that transcends all understanding, that you would remind them that fear is not from you. Mm. Um, I pray just that this community uh, could rejoice with just grateful hearts. And I pray that wherever um, any of the students, faculty members are, um, that you'll just uh, gift them with a true joy um, in their hearts, Lord, knowing that um, you are God and that you are good. And I pray that you can uh, continue to see your goodness throughout all of this. Um, so I thank you again just for this time. And even though we can't meet in person for the blessing of technology that we get to come together and fellowship with each other. So um, mm -hmm. I thank you. And I just uh, pray that you continue to watch over this entire community. Mm -hmm. and I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, sister. It was awesome. Thank you, thank you so much, Irie. So appreciate it. So thank good to you. see you. Absolutely. Okay, I've got a benediction for all of us. This is out of uh, Romans 15. Receive this. May the God of endurance and encouragement grant you to live in such harmony with one another in accord with Christ Jesus that together you may with one voice glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace and believing so that by the power of the Holy Spirit, you may abound in hope. Abound in hope. Bless you. Uh, Friday, we are going to hear from our very own alumni from the class of 2019, Lucas Vieira. He's going to share a word. So <laughs> there we go. All right, Irie, good to be with you. Westmont community, bless you. Remember, you can... Uh, go on to our westmont.edu, put in Campus Pastor's Office, click down there and look at the chapel schedule, and we'll have these uploaded within 24 hours, and you can share these uh, worship services with other people. Bless you guys. Thanks. Bye, Irie.